Hey everyone, and welcome back to Watch Trading Academy. Now we've been absent for a little bit, but we are back. So now comes the question, what is the better investment, Rolex or Omega? This is the question I get the most when it comes to this channel. And so today I've decided to do a great video just talking about that. All right guys, so we are back. Now listen, really simply put, Omega and Rolex have a lot of similarities. We talk about designs. I mean, they both have green dial, yellow gold, you know, watches. They both have very similar sizing. And more importantly, they appeal to a very similar audience. Many times, uh, Omegas are a stepping stone into Rolex. And only, uh, I would say, in the last couple of years, Omega has gained a lot of clout having some ex exquisite models because of their representation through the media, who's wearing them, and so the Speedmasters, the Special Edition Snoopies, etc., have seemed to have gained tremendous value in the secondary market, being scarce watches that are harder to get. So the question that I get a lot is, are Omegas as good or better investment than Rolexes, and, and what makes the, the real difference? So simply put, remember, we at Watch Trading Academy look at everything from a place of money. We don't really care about the orology of the watch or how complicated its movement is unless it plays a role into the scarcity of watch as it pertains to reselling it and the dollar in and out. So remember, if you want to learn how to trade watches and want to learn from some of our members on how they've reached $100,000 in profit in just a short 12 months after watching our program, just click the link in the description, take either the free training or join our full community where we're going to teach you how to trade watches and make sure you're profitable doing it. But let's get back to this ultimate question of which makes the better watch. Now, in order to be able to answer this, we have to preface this fact that less than 8% of the Rolex catalog is basically profitable watches, which means watches that you can buy that are worth more the day you buy them than they are from being brand new. And less than 2% of the Omega catalog is uh, generally speaking, worth more on the used market from the very first day you buy. Now, if we look at it that way, then Rolex would typically say it is the winner. It has more units that could qualify, but it Rolex has more watches than Omega. So I don't know necessarily that, you know, the amount of units that you can get matters in that partake, but it's just good information to know. Now, in addition to that, something that we got to consider here is that there is a difference between the two. While there are many Omegas, that are also worth more money being brand new than they are being, uh, meaning that when they're used and being brand new because they're hard to get, there are more Rolex units that continue to uphold that value over time. So one of the big differences between, you know, Rolex and Omega as it pertains to values is I'm gonna bring you back to an example here that where, I don't know if you guys remember the swatch kind of thing going on where everybody was rushing to buy a swatch uh, Omega collaboration, they bought it for like 200 bucks and they were reselling for six, 700 bucks. And you could buy these watches, they weren't limited, you could buy them on the internet. It was pretty easy, cool, simple kind of uh, item to procure out there. So I thought to myself, I said, why are all these people lining up trying to buy these watches? And it was this idea that they were buying them so they could resell them on the internet, they were gonna bring a little bit more. So there was this craze because people could double their money basically. And it was not that it was a lot of money, but it was still something. This reminded me basically of how Omega works. It's like, it's hyped, so you're going to get a lot of people buying it, you're going to get a lot of people wanting it, but over time, will it really hold value the way Rolex does? Now, historically, we've seen that Rolex watches uh, always have a significant demand, level of demand when they are rare and hard to get. And if we look at even rare instances when a watch is 30 years old and suddenly worth $10 million or anything because it's a special edition, this proves again the longevity of the value that Rolex brings, not just overnight, but over 10, 15, 20 years. One of the power aspects of an investment, it's its ability to continue going up in value past just its initial phase. Think like a stock. If you have an IPO and it's gonna be very popular immediately and the hype is gonna make it go up, then that hype is gonna die down. But over time, will it be a good investment because the value will continuously rise because the company brings more value. And so for Rolex, I feel like that's very defined. For Omega, I don't think it's quite there. I do believe there are some very rare Omega instances that are uh, out there and could be worth a lot of money in the very long term. But I will tell you that every story we ever hear of a great investment or a great surprise of what something was worth always starts with the letter R. 
especially as it pertains to the media. So that's my take on the topic. Simply put, uh, I always bet on Rolex if it's between Rolex and Omega. So if you're looking for a better long-term investment, you're gonna perhaps pass on to your kids, carry on for a very long time. Remember that not all Rolexes are great investments. You have to know which models to buy, you have to know which models to ignore, and more importantly, make sure you learn how to do that at Watch Trading Academy. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And don't forget to check out our partner GrailZ for great listings of great watches, of course, at great prices. Like, subscribe, turn on notifications. I'll catch you next time for Watch Trading Academy. As one of the most profitable watch traders in America, I get asked this question a lot. Where do you go to sell your watches? Because buying them seems to be easy, but selling them seems to be the hard part. Well, simply put, I use this tool called GrailZ. See, GrailZ.com is an auction platform where you can list watches that are high-end watches, of course, and get auction bids by real retail buyers, not just industry wholesalers or traders like in Facebook groups. This is a huge opportunity for you as a watch trader or as a watch enthusiast to sell and buy watches via this auction platform. It's safe, it's easy to use, and more importantly, they guarantee the authenticity of each and every watch, giving your buyers or sellers the peace of mind when they're doing their transactions. So make sure you check out brailsy.com to use this incredible auction platform. And again, don't forget, I never endorse something I don't use or believe in. This has been my motto for the last 10 years, and I can't recommend Grailsy enough. Grailsy, buy and sell iconic timepieces.